Hello and welcome to Buses Podcast. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and follow my Instagram and Facebook pages to find out who my next guest will be and when my next podcast goes live. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to Buses Podcast. Today I'm joined by One Man Riot, Jody Meekle. Yeah. How are you? Uh, good, man. thank you. you good? Yeah, good. Last day we were talking about growing up, going to prison, getting into boxing um, and just how your life's sort of gone really because you're a big character in Scumfart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look forward so, to it. Yeah, so what was growing up like for you from Riddins and stuff? See, fair, listen, I, was, I was a little scruffy kid from council state. Like, <laughs> what, you see, what you see is what you get. I was a scruffy little kid from council state. I had to fuck all the kids. We grew up, obviously, nothing. I yeah, got mum. Uh, obviously, we lived on Tumby Road. We were talking, obviously, back in the 80s, obviously, before you even thought of. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I- growing up with your mum, uh, there was a bit of a funny story about your mum. And a, yeah, and a woman fun. she didn't particularly get on with in the town because of something horrible that she, uh, she did. Listen, I'm one of that world. Even when I think of it, I still I look, even now I look. But yeah, she's my old mum, she's a nut job, that's who many of us today. And, uh, but, <laughs> well, but yeah, I remember she, uh, obviously, um, she lost to kick away Peter, and uh, her parents just stub cigarettes at him, stuff like that. And, um, uh, yeah, Coming to mum look after him. Uh, he comes on so short, so she was giving back to his mum. And I, um, the mum did it again, burnt the cigarettes there and everything like that. And I, uh, he was in hospital with Barry Peter once, obviously, burns and stuff like that. And um, he's trying for Murray Pam, Murray Pam. So no, even nurse couldn't get him, so he had to run mum. Why to go? So I'm all said that I've seen, she asked, every time I see that one, I fucking beat the shit out of her. I remember, I mean, like I said, I always remember, oh, I was a big girl as well back then, very big girl. And um, went swimming. And uh, where Bluebell used to be now, where Blue is now, I'm sure it used to be power stretchers. And I'll never forget, I was going down to the old lace centre, and uh, next to him was that fucking Susan Judd. I mean, my was a big girl. She's a big girl, she's like a fucking sprinter running across the road. So then the next thing, he's fucking close, going over and why, fucking labour, labour. Well, it's a fucking baby bat, it's a baby bat, I don't know if say a word. I remember, I mean, I was still out when he's eight, nine year old. Obviously, I've seen quite a lot of bats in my life. Uh, yeah, anyway, so, um, so then years later, we sat at 10, I said, I'm going real bad arthritis, um, counsels, and she's fucked, eh, bless her. And she sat there, she went, coffee, she's like, oh, my back, me. And she went, and her eyes lit up, she went, oh, fucking Susan Judd. And she sprinted, I said, I can't be no version of Usain Bolt. She's fucking gone. She ran out the door, down his steps, she smacked me, like, fuck off. I'm wrong with it as well. <laughs> I promise you, I, thought, I know that, she hit me a few times. She fucking smacked his face. She smacked on this wall. And this wall was like, obviously, this side was this side. And that was like, she fucking vaulted like some sort of pole vault. She like, smash fuck out his bird. That's it, Pam, I know, I know. Oh, yeah, fuck, yeah, fucking horrible cut. You beat shit out of hey. Come in here, I'll say, she gone. Oh, it makes it coffee, my back is hers. That's a fucking brain, you back there! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so, anyway, so, next thing, shot Nick well, Bill. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, anyway, yeah. Um, an hour later, we bear in mind, we're all about riddings again. This fucking posh car pulled up. Whoa, who's that? Everyone. Next thing, this guy puts his cap on, comes out, on the door. Uh, fucking old Bill, inspectors, you know, <laughs> please inspect him, drop my old ear off. What happened, Mum? Yeah, for action, son. Fuck off! Not that quick, Mum. Not that happened that quick. Oh, yeah. The one with doctor, the doctor said, no way this panic can't warn to cause her injuries. Fucking doctor, back him up, hadn't he? She could not cause the injuries. The <laughs> fuck is she off of it? Whatever. Yeah, so, uh, that's what Mum said, I could the fine South and Psycho, isn't it? So, obviously, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I would say I'm, I'm uh, South African, not English. Fuck English, I'm South African. <laughs> Even when the, what was it, when the Rugby World oh, Cup yeah, was ch- on ch- well. ch- yeah, ch- yeah, I, was, I went into Comet. It was a bit cold, but for a bit And uh, England, I was like, yeah, come on, South Africa, yeah, spring back, fucking get in now. I'm cheering like that, everyone. No one dare say a word, but I tell about Summer Row back in the day. It was, uh, it was a rough old place. Even old Bill wouldn't come down the other day. Yeah. Um, so like I say, he's, I think the first thing I've read from your youth was 19 and getting a petrol bomb lobbed at you and putting windows through and stuff. It, it, so. it obviously started before that, but that petrol bomb for instance, yeah, we were back in there, the t- family called Team Biz, so people have heard of them. That's a fucking lunatics back in the day. And um, 
I was remember the guy broke up with Craig and it was and uh, his best mate Andy. They've chased me down this road. Um and uh well, I was in Fort Pleasure one and they fucking went in the house, smashed fuck out of the house, they smashed the windows over and like that. Went to it, some next to come out with petrol bombs and stuff like that. And uh, obviously, obviously the, what the kid on Pedro, well, he got four and a half years for it. Yeah. Uh, the guy brought up Craig, he got 12 months for it, and his mate got two years for it. And I remember being sat in Derby Crown Court at the time, we were at circuit at the time. And bear in mind, I was only, I was 16 at the time, yeah, I was 16 at the time, I was 16. And uh, we got on a while, because it was about, four, I think it was 14 when it happened, 16 when it happened. It's fair, it actually defined basically my life really in a way without signing Corley. Um, a judge, uh, the judge obviously gave me two years spending cent- uh, two, sorry, two hundred discharge. I mean, if I didn't get trouble in two years, I'd, I'd obviously been it sort of thing. Yeah. And then they sent me set that down to twelve month. I always seem to set that you fucking dirty German bastard and started abusing the judge. Fucking crown court, really, me slagging off crown court comes on the sun. Um, yeah, so I only got to look at the car, but obviously I was in the army as a kid, I was up to the uh, Royal Engineers, like mm-hmm. building things, stuff like that. And um, I see something onto another story, so you get me right storytelling about now. Um, yeah, obviously, I, was, I wanted to go in the army, I was 17, I was in like, the love of my life at OK, so. And um, yeah, anyway, so what, what happened was I see. We, we had to uh, Henry, old Henry's, you know, like this, you won't yeah. do it. Anyway, she got Henry's and um, one of her mates had stitched me up and said, oh, he's trying to pull some more birds. Next thing, Kirsty was punching fuck out of me. She's a lovely, quiet person. He, he, she uh, yeah. on about Henry that I'm now. And, um, yeah, so the bounce left for like, fuck, her brother Trevor, he's a big person I used to come for at the time, obviously, box pro, he was good German. I was laughing like, all these bouts were laughing like, fuck, I was trying to probably get beat up. I, mean, about, I was only like 17. Not even quite 18 at the time. Yeah. And uh, anyway, next time I got Kirsty down. I was like, oh, Kirsty, Kirsty. And she had it all locked out. I was about 19 minutes, I'm, 19, 20 minutes, I've been punched shit out of I went outside afterwards and um, like, just trying to say, listen, Kirsty, I'm not doing anything. The next thing she's beat, punching shit out of me again. Then I grabbed her hands. I was like, I never hit a bird in my life. In fact, I'm lying. It's hit a bird once. She put an eye on her head so I'm not the clean out. I didn't actually knock a client, she didn't knock an answer for her, bitch. But yeah, anyway, so that's so sorry. Hey, so we're, it's not really it, women. Hey, so when, um, so I got around, I was like, Kirsty, back in, calm down, calm. Next thing he's like, oh yeah, I think I'm having a bird. I thought, well, get the bird, you fucking lot having it. So I paid the fuck out of his feet, well, two lads, and one went off down the side of Henry. Yeah. I thought, yo, fuck off, you're getting away, you're having it too. So I ran down side of Henry, grabbed his kid, smacked him. Next thing I felt it's whacked down the lane, spun around, and fuck off. Chin, stretching the copper, not the copper, I don't know. I mean, as I say, obviously, uh, before this incident, I actually got into the army and it says, uh, let's me run away, right, I'm sorry. Yeah, so obviously, before I was due, 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 obviously this incident, like uh, a week before this incident, I've uh, been to army careers and they uh, said, so, oh, yeah, when you come to the charge for this, we can obviously, we'll yeah. send you to the run there and bridge that never. It was 284 and this incident happened. I got another sort of the police officers out of the Amicry of fuck and obviously mm. and obviously yeah, uh, Pete Tan from there. Yeah. Uh, so from from the did you get to did you go to prison for that? No, not that time. I think I, I was uh nineteen when I was in prison, a bit of kids here off in schnapps. I was getting I was getting by two I was getting by two kids, hey, so uh, I went on there's a lot. Oh fuck I'd make him scream in it and if he I thought if he screamed, he'd actually fucking run off, would not he? So it worked, he was that's bit of off, he screamed like me. So I've gone, I, so what I said in the interview, I says, um, no, I've signed my policy, when I bit his ear off, we slipped over, tripped up, and um, obviously, his ear must come off in the, in the meantime. Did it fuck, I've nagged all the ear, the bouncer pulled him in, and the bouncer pulled him in, it's like, it likes that massive one, whang, it went twang. <laughs> I think he's still loving the snaps in about that one, anyway. But, yeah. So, was what was the first time going to prison like for you? How did you find it? Oh, I don't care what anyone says. If anyone says that to you, no matter how big or hard they are, if they say they go to prison, they don't know what they bother them. They're full of shit. I was, I'll never forget, we're in old prison. You got the, the old, um, uh, where you come in, you come in, you come on to see the way, you look up. If it, you, the smell, and they, you'll never forget the smell, it's obviously bird shit all over. The pigeons are very, and you look up the same, uh, every shout, and you think, fuck me, what on earth? Honestly, it's daunting, very daunting. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah, it was, uh, it was different, different. But yeah. even though you found it a bit daunting, you didn't quite behave in prison either. 
No, I think I was in the. Uh, what was that? I ended up with YPs that time. I ended up with three and a half of them a man. And I got two very strong community service. Obviously, they made that obviously they start they started trouble. So look at it. And um, but yeah, I, I always remember my, my obviously the guy brought me. He's like my stepdad. He said to me, "Crazy, listen, don't ever take a piss out of you in prison." He says, "Listen, eat them first for you." you. Yeah, yeah. So he's big Jordy. Oh no, it wasn't. yeah, it was it? Wasn't, sure was it was a Jordy. He's a big fucking nut job anyway, apparently, in the YP. They took my chair, so yeah, I sat there, it's tough, you know, I went back there, like, fuck off, smack this kid. I finally like, fuck this kid, this kid was hard to fucking nail, swear to God. And uh, anyway, I got a right little ding dong with him. And after that, he thought it was great. And all he got in his kid thought, fuck yeah, you got some balls, you haven't you? And like I say, that was it. <laughs> Never a fucking chair. When uh, obviously, as I went, obviously, the next time I went in, obviously, I was old and stuff, but I went a bit Pete Tang a bit more. Uh, misdemeanor so to say yeah well yeah there's a few more exciting stories from there's a bit I tell I'll say, I'll say, it's, prison. Funny, it's funny I could tell people stories and just look at me and think what a shit you are well, I, kept, I kept giggling when you first told me and I was giggling on FaceTime because I was like I can't believe that that sort of stuff yeah you don't have it yeah. it goes on like yeah, I mean I fucking have barricade prison officers smart prison officers and fucking yeah, that'd be a nightmare he's one of them uh, a friend Neil Almond who's actually he actually met him his ironic thing was I actually met this guy when he was, uh, he was a, he was a gym, gym screw. I was seeing prison. Gym screws like normal people. You don't see them as the scumbag sort of things you do, prison mm. officers. Yeah, so, um, well, I have got a few stories here, Almond. And so, obviously, Neil Almond, obviously, was a gym screw, he sat me up there. And uh, I went to Box 10 Pauls. I mean, out of the. I don't know how old I've been, it's fair. We were first I, I didn't start Boston, I was 27, so I was like. 27 obviously, 27, yeah, it was early on, we were 27, 28. And uh, so I've gone there, oh yeah, this, this, uh, this, this guy took one of the pads, my, look, my, I look, still remember, he's, he's a great guy, he was. He's lad boxer as well, but lad was a decent boxer. And uh, Mike said to him, he said, Mike, right, you come back in this next week after him. She's a fucking woman, you are, aren't you? Mrs. Jo- <laughs> what are you, mate? What's that say? What does this come for? I was like, this big fish in a little tiny pond. I was St. Paul's, these kids are class. There was Luke Campbell there, Samir, I can't remember how proud his fucking name somebody. There was Luke Campbell, there was fucking some cracking kids there, Google boxers. Obviously, Luke Campbell, that's one to do it. Doing Samir, you need box British titles, so. So I'm, I'm just a little fucking dafty there. So I've not stopped really said a word, I don't even this man, this coach, he's you're a fucking woman, you're all right. What, what, what? He says, you fucking smacked my mate. <laughs> what is it? He SO. I love it. Uh, Barnes was it? SL Barnes and all. He said, You loved your fucking dinner and run down the stairs and smacked it, didn't you? No, 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 no. <laughs> and Neil Armley came on, bear in mind, it was Jim Screw at the time. And um, he said, Neil, Neil, it's 20 years. He said, What's your, what's your, what's your prison number? I saw it now, D8837, saw it now. And uh, obviously, Neil had gone to prison, put the number in the prison thing, come back to see on previous conviction, obviously, prison file. Yeah. He went, you were a fucker, you are, aren't you? <laughs> it's funny that I was like, obviously, when I've not been that much sure, well, I've been a bit sure, not ridiculous, I suppose, yeah. but yeah. But it's funny, yeah, so, uh, well, I say, an awful lot was Neil Armand, obviously, ended up in um, Everfort Prison, where he was gym scoop. But what happened was, I was in, in Walls, this is obviously after, well, I say, I lost a British licence. And uh, end up being banged up there, uh, and uh, I was in walls. This stupid, this screw. I hate, I hate people who think they're it. Listen, I'm not hard. I'm no, no pretend I'm hard. I'll, I'll just fight any bastard. I'm not hard. I'll just give his, give the badger. I'll just fight anyone. Um, I say this stupid, this screw. He's been an absolute cock. It's how he smacked me on. Oh, fuck you, you have one back now. The smacked him back. We had a little tussle. Hey, uh, anyone will know? Obviously, uh, walls are full of fucking idiots. Very proper prison officers. Uh, like obviously he's a private prison, they're just full of like shopkeep ex shopkeeping and shit, like mm. ridiculous. And uh, when you in like obviously the main prison service, right it's far, it's not with big bastards and stuff like that. Well these idiots in this um private prison just divs. Anyway, so I fight it must took about forty minutes to get me to the cell. And I um there's another story to tell, but I'm not going to go into all these stories, you're fucking full balloon. Hey, so anyway, of course I ended up being banged up in this cell. Anyway, uh, I got uh, banged up in the block, and they moved over to uh, Neil Hamlin's gym, uh, Neil Hamlin's uh, wing. Uh, the lucky thing, <laughs> I'm not even going to those that, but anyway, so I basically moved to Neil Hamlin's uh, prison in Everfort, so I used gym screw there. 
Uh, he's on over that crap at Neil, all right, it's bang on. Anyway, um, <laughs> I got an ear fault, my back was fucked at the time, but it was the first time I'd ever heard of my back, and um, so I'm in, I'm in the, in the uh, thing, and the screw had been absolutely twat on a visit. I thought, you're not having it now. They, they nicked me uh, for saying I won't sit down as a visit. I said, listen, I'm not sitting down because I can't sit down, my back is that bad. Mm. I'm being a cop, whatever like that, and I. Um, Oh, fuck it, so I, bike, I, thought, I said to my mate, so I'm biking up in the screwed office in, in a minute. He went, oh, fuck off, said, yeah. And I had, I had the book, the app, uh, German book. Yeah. And Neil Allen actually brought me a hardback copy in. So I actually, actually signed it, but to Neil, really sorry for upsetting you, and sort of going against you. Obviously, you've done so much for me, thank you so much, but I'm all going to want to Look, lots of love, Jody. Yeah. And, you, and I said, you're right, make sure you've Neil Armand out. They're breaking up and screwed off this. And the best it was, they actually even rung Neil Armand the kick off Craig Derbyshire. And honestly, he started off. And they rung Craig Derbyshire up, and uh, uh, Neil Armand is in Scotland with Craig Derbyshire boxing. And I uh, said, Neil, um, what, it's Jody, do you think you can ring your office and like, get him out of his office? Fuck off, it's Jody. He'll do what he wants, he's not gonna listen to me. <laughs> well, I was backing up in the screwed office. I was in the screwed office and uh, went in his fat screw, horrible bastard, a senior officer. He went, Is you'll starve now, won't you? We'll come out with his dinner time. <laughs> don't worry about me, mate. I've come with a loaf of bread, a box of cheese, and uh, uh, a block of cheese, sorry, and a box of eggs. <laughs> what are you doing with that? Don't you worry about me, you fat cunt. And about three hours back to barricade, you're sizzling. And, Miko, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm making a cheese egg, a cheese, uh, cheese egg toast dude. Well, I did that. It's a fucking Muslim brothers in here, isn't he, daft bastard? And the Muslim, obviously, there's their brothers on the wings, but uh, you could use, but obviously, the Muslim brothers, because I don't like that bollocks, and so I'm in the office. <laughs> I was using the fucking Muslim brothers making cheese egg, egg toast dude. Yeah. Um, uh, got into a bit of trouble with the governor as well. Yeah, I was, was at the same time. Yeah, that was a whole year, that was years before that was. Um, I got, I got obviously moved up from YPs to Cons, and um, I, this, this guy, was, he's from Barnsley, I can't remember his name, he says, uh, he said, I've had enough, he's, I'm fucking barricaded up, he said, I'm getting out of prison. Ah, right, mate, he said, if you don't want to do it, mate, he said, get your son out. Nah, I thought, I thought, I'll have a bit of this, 21 year old, I thought, I'll fucking get this one, I'll have a good barricade, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, it's fucking great, we smashed cupboards up, we fucking took me around to me. In the uh, whole, whole, whole prison there at the time, they like a big fucking metal spike, well, maybe a metal pole in the roof. Then a little one, like, held your torch around. So I really torch around, the next thing, this metal thing called a spike. So I dig the fucking big one out. Oh, it's, it's, it's probably the best barricade I've ever done in my life. It's mint, it's amazing. Anyway, so we've done this barricade, and I, uh, this kid went, oh no, you're fucked, aren't we? Well, yeah, mate, we're barricading out. He says, oh shit, let's put everything back together. We got some fucking super glue then. What are you doing? Super glue, super glue, super glue comes back together. We smashed them out a hundred pieces. You shut your fucking mouth, sit there, keep your mouth shut. The screw them up. What's going on here? What's going on, lads? Listen, what ice prison? He says, why are you going to get ice prison? Want helicopter, loads of bullshit, want a bloke doll, like, just loads of daft fucking things, be a dickhead. So, about, I think the next, next it must be the bank about 24 hours. And he said, listen, uh, that's it. Uh, next thing, clothes are short. Right, so we just bagged for 12 hours. I thought, was, I thought I'd chat a lot of I thought, I'm fucking right by here. I don't think I was, I wasn't even hungry at the time, it was great. And then, uh, next thing, he put his jack on the door. Obviously, we put everything where the lot was, thinking that's where it is. Did this jack, the hydraulic jack, it fucking punched the door. Off easy, the door, oh, fucking hell. Looked outside, honestly, he was like, oh, God, it was fucking, it must have been me. 50, 60 screws outside, all the fucking right here. Oh my god. I thought, fuck it, I'm gonna get pace down, I'm gonna have it done properly. So I ran out off his bed, dived on him, went like, wee! I went, fuck off! The pile like Red Sea, I smacked the floor next to he's gonna jump on top of me. Punch fuck out me. Anyway, yeah, so, and I was still there laughing, I was laughing at him, you horrible fat cunt, you're a bit fees, Carl. <laughs> I'm gonna regret his cunt, you'll get his cunt back, you'll get it back. He said, I'm a bigger and better people than equal than you. So they're fucking not done it yet. And he's pushing the fuck out. You're right, shooing. Anyway, so we've got to the block. Put down a block. Well, back then, obviously, you had to, you had to, when they come around in the morning, obviously, the governor would come around in the morning, the doctor would come around, and the chaplain. And then, yeah, obviously, you meant to sit, stand back back at the wall, and get in with the governor. So he said, So he said, So I do that. What? What is that? Fucking bed, 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 bed. Get back to the wall! Why are you going there? 
All the time, taking a poo. Morning, go there. Hey, you all right? Yeah, and the first few times, just fucking uh, twisting up like a twat. Oh, it hurts like fucking twisting up. Yeah, little thumbs like that. Oh, it hurts anyway. Anyway, yeah. So for the first, I was like, well, I just took, took the pace out, so just got twisted up. I stood there laughing, morning governor! I was like, name me one to governor! Morning governor! Just take it out, it's been an absolute fucking cop. Hey, anyway, after about four or five days of this, the governor just left me on the bed. So he take him out, morning governor! Morning governor! And no more prisoner tech me at the time. <laughs> I mean, even, even when I was in the worst, dispersal prisoners, obviously, what obviously your lives are doing. He basically, we're not taking him. Not because he couldn't handle me, because he could have handled me, mm. but because I thought, I'm not letting them unsettle, they wouldn't let me, because they thought about me unsettling their prisoners, and they would tits up then. So they wouldn't attack me. So I'm now booking on prison, now he, um, so I'm going, I'm going, obviously you're out one at a time in, in your cell. And so I wrote, I go to my mum, I said, hey mum, uh, you alright? Yeah, I'll chat with you, she passed away now, I said, I said, alright mum, yeah, I said, well, right, so I'm going to get off now, so he's going to people on the I'm get off now, speak to you later, alright, love you, bye. So he'd go with feet, make up, if I was all right, every morning I'd say, what are you going to do? Well, fuck off, smack, I'd hit him, right? Yeah. So I'd hit him around, I'd even left up, but I didn't even manage to get him another shot, but the fucking bell went, but I got an absolute shoe out, beat a fuck. I tell you, the best key I took in my life, honestly, how bad I couldn't move for days after. But it's like, Michael, what are you doing? Nah, I'm hungry. I couldn't eat the cunt, that's why I could move. <laughs> but I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare let him be the satisfaction. But yeah, yeah. Uh, luckily, because um, I was a bad man, I just couldn't get all building. I bruised a foot, I battered it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. If, you, if you're covered in bruises, you don't go to an external cart for it or something, do you? Cause well, you it's probably could, but I say, obviously, that how, could they, how could they ring the police? After three days, four days, all that. Bear in mind, if they ring the police, you'd beat the governor up. Sure, we had to log it. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fucking up spectacular. Mm. I'm presuming this again. Um, yeah, you know, to be in a place like this, we've uh, had a sort of league over there, blah blah, blah over. And obviously, I mean, who knows how long we come? You can't really know a week later. Say, oh, by the way, yeah, last week, Jeremy you know chinned the governor. Can you come in and get him? <laughs> you can't, you can't here. So, mm. so then yeah, you so. used tried to use boxing as an advantage to get out. Was it in a cart? Or something you tried at 27 no, you said well, you was going to yeah, I was, I was uh, yeah well at 27 I uh, I sat about I, thought, I was just in the prison again for, uh, for smacking someone I thought fuck I'm 27 year old I can't have a prison again maybe I had eyes bows everything and I thought I'm 27 year old I can't get fucking I can't a prison again now this time uh, anyway so yes yeah, so I sat I, I went to I, I didn't meet I didn't want to start but I started with little dubs at the fucking bell end and um yeah, so yeah, he let me do the training gym, fair play to him. And uh, he got reference off him, cute judge, just loved it, it's a Chinese restaurant right direction. And he said, Oh, yeah, you know, he said, it's great stuff, it's carry on with it. And that's, I didn't even tend to box, and I, I just boxed, boxed everyone and everyone. And yeah. I just carried on boxing, it was great. Yeah, because I said, No, for being a journeyman, and it wasn't. Yeah, well, always I'm, winning. A shit bo- I'm a shit boxer. Listen, I'm honest with you, I don't like boxer, I can't box, I'm shit. I, I never had a trainer, but my, my, I was trying to say, um, I was never going to sell tickets. I was never going to be a ticket seller. I can't fill the telephone box up. Honestly, I can't have a ticket. I can't. So, it's just, I was on the road. And that's what I did. I, obviously, I had 40 fights as an amateur. Boxed Aaron and everyone. I mean, I boxed Richard Towers. He boxed Luke Brown for the uh, uh, Commonwealth Title Eliminator. I was uh, keep, honestly, a fucking bit of a bottle unreal. Carl Spencer, mm-hmm. he's a big twat. He was two and two of him. Um, Danny Price, he obviously boxed Great Britain. He was absolutely fucking bell end, he got disqualified for chin uh, but him, I think it was. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I boxed out on everyone and that's just the way I was gonna go. Uh, in the end I was uh, I turned over pro and uh, that's why I went, I went down obviously the uh journey route. I, I, I was yeah. never gonna be anything else but journey and simple as that. Yeah, like I said, I watched a couple of your videos on YouTube of you of you fighting, um and you leaning against the rope, pretending yeah, to I wobble know. and whatever and you're the only the only fighter that's sort of known that's got yeah. deducted points for excessive clowning. Well, it, when I sold tickets, yeah, I'm pretty sure, don't say, I, I didn't lose when I lost sold tickets. I was unbeaten, technically. When did you sell tickets? Was it your last fight you sold uh, tickets? No, for? A, few, a few times, but obviously, some, sometimes you, 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 you sell tickets so like you get the win sort of thing. You basically, basically buying a win sort of thing. But yeah, but uh, yeah, we're going back to the uh, the uh, losing a point. I'm the only person in British boxing history. You look at the point for excessive clowning, and uh, that's Spice Webb, which is Andrew McInerney's cousin. 
yeah, was it nephew? Sorry, Enzo Macarelli's nephew. Sorry, yeah. well, yeah, that's funny. I, I literally wrote, I was taking the piss out of Enzo Macarelli. I was saying it over all Enzo now. It's funny, no, I wrote, taking the piss out of him. No, yeah, chop me, mate. Right. I don't want to take it. Actually, he's probably swapped me for some tea and piss. So, put on tea and piss, but yeah, it's mad. Yeah, it's not just in the ring as well, it's out, all the people outside as well giving. Some yeah, I, was shit. I mean, like even Prince Nazim when I boxed Cam Johnson, I took a piss out of Prince Naz. Um, I'm a bit around like, fucking that seven because you're from the council state. Prince Naz is that like, fucking legend, isn't he? And um, I boxed Cam Johnson, and uh, beforehand, the, the local reporter from Scully Run Lewis said, Jody, so what do you think of Cam Johnson's comments? Uh, power hurts, being obviously used to be super weight amateurs, speed kills. And, and Joffa called, being tough fucking Naz, I'd say some bird, wouldn't it? Because he got done for dangerous driving, didn't he? I don't know if death or whatever. He got, he got done for driving. Anyway, he uh, said, I can't pull that. So I put it on Facebook. He's chasing Jones from Lincoln. for the counts from Lincoln. Um, obviously, told Cal out of there. Presumably, anyway. And he can run a uh, wrong now. So, after his, after his fight, I boxed that uh, back to Cal. Bear in mind, Ricky Burns will take on the car. Brad in Glasgow. And in, 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 in obviously, the hotel bar with Naz. So, he says, uh, what has she fucking said about me? And I think he thought it was a bullshit. I started laughing. I told word for word. And he burst out laughing. Oh, is Callum Rung up all upset? He said, I told him he's a funny guy. He's a funny guy. He's fucking howling. There's yeah. that Prince Naz laughing like, fuck it, me. He's great. Yeah, see, obviously, you've you not just fought in England, you've fought abroad as well. Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, well, is that a class of abroad? No, uh, obviously, obviously, boxing. First of the time, I've got stopped at Tenerife. Um, Obviously, at Super Eight Amateurs, obviously I boxed it out of all. I fucking, I never got dropped or anything like that. And uh, it's great. Also, I just thought was, I was invincible. I never thought I'd ever get stopped. And uh, I'm a, my, a friend of mine, Lee Murray, says, Do you know, I get fighting um, in Tenerife? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. And I never thought you off, so I never really trained for it. Never did know. And uh, I was up at, I can't remember, I was up, I mean, like 13, 7, 13, 8. Jody's come off. You what? It's come off. Uh, I got my passport. My passport actually landed. That, it, it, the weird thing was, right? Fucking ironic. We, you, you really couldn't write it. We went to fly off, like, say, for example, like the um, Friday. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we couldn't fly on Friday because my passport wasn't here. But we'd run the passport office, and the, obviously the courier said, You're going to drop my courier. Saturday morning, so we booked our flight. I think I mean, this is maybe Thursday, you know, one day. Yeah. Hey, so we rebooked our flight, and I, um, I was still away. I fucking had a run, been eating off, and of course, I'd, I'd, I'd obviously lost the weight, flew to, flew to Spain, didn't think that of it. Didn't think, you know, you only see people say about, uh, you know, weight drain, so like that. it's disgusting, it's another, like, listen, it is disgusting. Unless you've done it and seen it, it's horrendous. Mm. And bear in mind, I've been in some fucking massive punctures. And stuff like that, and not one to drop me or hurt me, even like that. Hey, so, so it's kind of like I lost a stone in yeah, the best part of what 36 hours tops. Hey, so I've, I've made the weight. Uh, yeah, I've, apparently, um, obviously, is, is my wife, well, my wife now I'm with, or well, not with her, but my, my wife. Yeah. Uh, um, she was with me at the time, and uh, she says, she says I, I drank a bottle of water. You seen your face just rehydrating. That's how bad I was. Mm. And I, um, I remember being in prison, and uh, a guy, a, a Spaniard, I was going to teach him no word, teach him, teach him, no, swear words that lot. I'll never forget, I was shortly, Mari Cardi Chimapoye, he was a queer cocksucker. <laughs> no, anyway, so, so anyway, uh, so I've, I've drunk this water, we've made the way, you know, so we've done our face to face, so you get it face to face. Why do you call him to a point? His kid's kid, oh, fuck off! He slapped me, he lost the plot, his kid. I said, I'll fucking murder you. Murder you in your fucking head. I thought, absolutely do that. I thought, like, fucking smash your head. His kid's like, shit. Anyway, um, I said, when you need to run out and smash your fucking head in? Never happened. I got dropped, I got, I got fucking knocked, but well, I think it knocked Spike, he hit me, right? I, 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 I say, I thought I'd do all right, first 30 seconds. Uh, it wasn't even long. And the next thing, fucking hell, he hit me with a shot. I didn't think I. Do you know what, to be fair, I didn't feel it. And I must have been, been gone. The referees like waved it off. Mm. Like when I seen it afterwards, they're like fucking bollocks. Yeah, because then you think it, you tripped at first. Yeah, I've got trip. And so I've got back up. Obviously, I will probably be ten camp. I got back up, uh, but it was a bad knock. Yeah, bad knockdown. Bad knockdown. And so I back up. And the referees went off. 
You fucking cheese spit bastard! You fucking cheese fuck! I put in this chair cleaning console, I'm absolute fucking dealer! That's alright, that's alright! Anyway, it says, Jody, it won, it won, it won! Like Lee Burton's the best mate, it fucking loves the Jody, he says, what day is it? I says, uh, it's Saturday! It's not Jody, it's Sunday. Yeah, we're only about half an hour, or we've been at the time. Jody, it's not, it's Sunday now, it's half past fucking whatever, it's early hours of morning, like that. Yeah, well, <laughs> technicality. I still thought Robert, hey, um, I was honest, I was a bit, I cried like a baby. I swear down. The first time I reached that, I cried like a fucking baby. I mean, Terry, my, my mate, uh, Tony Mann, who I met when I was banged up and all, he, 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 he was in Terry, but he was to watch it. We all went out of the piss, but I was that devastated, I couldn't go anywhere. But yeah, first time I bit had been stopped. And then you didn't have a quiet one in Malta either. When you yeah, we went to Malta and uh, that was Billy Cuito. We Billy probably watched this one. And um, the ironic thing is, my friend Lee Murphy was referee, and uh, he should he should be allowed to be in that position. Because the thing is, you could say Lee's my friend, but he's also Billy Creator's friend. Mm. He spent time in Hollywood with Billy, his family, stuff like that. So, recently, uh, I, I would say, close to a shot, was the decision to go with kids away last night. I, I messaged him, I said, listen, it was all straight and off. Listen, I said, to me, Lee, Lee's obviously uh, is re quite religious, staunch Catholic. I said, I said, listen, Lee's a foreign first man you'll never know. He'll never ever give you a bent decision. You know, it, it, it might look bent or whatever like that, but Lee will give it, in Lee's heart, it will always be, in his heart, the right decision. Mm. You know, he's a good referee. And uh, anyway, so, Collins got shot, he was refereeing his shot, and I, uh, I, had, uh, I had boxed at Cruiserweight week four. So I've gone there to Malta, I'm thinking, so this is uh, real. Softball up, cunt. He said, oh, Joe, you don't fight Malt. Uh, he said, I've got Malt. We, we need to go to fight Billy Creto. I'll oh, fight, aren't you, fuck? Heavyweight. And how much? Simple, how much? Yeah, so we went over there and. Um, so, so he's got weighed in, fuck out, weighed at 15 stone, 7 or like, he weighed at 20 stone, whatever it was. But I said, over here. He's like, I fight, and I see uh, his fucking rat on the top. I'll try and try to find the video footage, but listen. Billy's gone. Billy can argue what he likes. Uh, he probably will do. I mean, I like Billy as well now. But, but, but yeah, we, we are all right with Billy now. We, he's a good man. Oh yeah. Hey, so so, so Billy's gone. Hey, so, he's, he's, hey, Lee's gone. One, two, three. I think real sideline's kind of slow. He's a bit fucking slow. Anyway, I don't know what's going on. But, hey, so you see, you see on the video, Lee got to nine like that. They waved it off. So Billy got up at nine. He didn't moan at the start. And then I went back to the corner and Fran Hardy, it was actually another ironic thing. I ended up banged up with Fran Hardy's brother uh, before this, a year before this. It was ironic as well. And so, um, so yeah, so they went off. And then, anyway, afterwards, uh, they started complaining afterwards. So they wanted to stitch up this side and the other. Anyway, um, he could not really tell it. He could have boxed a beat from Master's title. Uh, he boxed him on his Billy Creator. I meant to box Billy Creator. And apparently, well, let's put it this way. When I, when I boxed Billy Creator, I started dropping ahead. Listen, these fucking boys, it was, it was like, they're all drinking crystal champagne, it's like, this is big rock boxes. Listen, I'm, I'm not stupid, they were naughty fucking boys. They were like, fucking like that, or mostly, like, fuck. And they, Lee fucking, obviously, he was like, fuck, he was a hate man Malta. I was sick about hate man Malta. I even went, I won that, I won that to Billy. Billy, you have a fucking belt if you want, I don't really want it. You have it? I want this ball, uh, NBC International, it's NBC tap, whatever it was. It's, it's behind my city somewhere. Uh, yeah, well, at my kid's house. Uh, yeah, um, so, so uh, obviously we had to get out of it. So fucking, it was high man, bush ticket, a taxi back. So uh, we got back, we obviously got back to the hotel. Fuck it, yeah, I was dodging. Uh, <laughs> listen, there was some naughty boys there. And um, yeah, well, I thought, fuck it, I'll get done in here, big time. Anyway, um, because was all, when I went, was there, uh, yeah. So this key called Lee Kelly going to fight Billy. And um, he got laid in, everything like that. And um, he disappeared. He went, he got a flight and went back to England. I don't know what he said, I can't remember what he, that word he said. They'll probably bring up and tell me that he's had to see this. Uh, I'm sure he said that obviously Matthew Holland says, so You fucking go and fight him. He says, That's it, you're dead. So uh, Billy, <laughs> he shit himself. So I said, Billy Creed always wanted a rematch for me. <laughs> I'll do it. So what I did, what we don't realise is what, what I did is, uh, I'll fight him, 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 I'll do it. So, 
<laughs> so what I did, for a floor boss, I listened to, to the, the, the guy, nice guy he was, it was probably, says, if you want the money, you, you, you want you fight Billy Carito, you sign a contract, you do this, you do that. I'm like, I'll tell what you fucking like, pal. Tell you what, you pay me if I win that ring. I will do that, I will do that. So I bought Billy Carito, in one leg, I had my passport, one f leg, I had my fucking purse money, and, and <laughs> oh, and the other side, the other side of my foot, I'd be fucking flight details, I'd book the flight from Stanton Airport. <laughs> what to do? No, I went pizza on, I was running out of the fucking stadium when I was doing it, get a taxi, go to the airport, I booked the flight to Stanton Airport. <laughs> That's true, I know, fucking funny yeah. that, but fuck that. But yeah, look, it's okay, everyone went off all pizza on, went great, Billy beat me and get on, I won one. So, so you had a bit of a running with the Butlin brothers who was on Danny Dyer's hardest men yeah. on telly. Uh, the nice guy, who was actually alright guy, she thought. Um, um, well yeah, but, so I don't know these fucking guys. Listen, I just, someone puts me, you put a pound in front of me, I'll fight him. Simple as that, that's how it was, when I was boxed. Whether it was a licensed amateur, pro, whatever the fuck up. Yeah, I just, just fight him, listen, someone's are paying me, I don't care. And uh, yeah, the next thing, got this, this thing, I, I don't know who the fuck these guys were. I don't know who they were. So I've gone to fuck it, gone, gone to this show in that lot uh, in Manchester and uh, listen, it's how you piece weight, it's another. I mean, I, I was not about a pound and a half, two pound of it. Well, I didn't realise that, but only these are BMA people, real BMA. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, two pound of it? It's not a fucking lot, is it? Obviously, they're thinking, well, so I had to have a conference, these brothers, and everything like that, uh, to see if, uh, obviously, uh, it's, it's facts enough. But bear in mind, I didn't realise at the time, he was with his dad and I had his men, with the right boy I was on, I hadn't fucking had a clue. And he said, I had, had a conference, and he says, so a guy comes to me, he's uh, from EBF, he says, uh, Jody, yeah? In fact, you, you give me your word, you don't know where they are. So he said, mate, I don't know who winning, mate. It cost me fucking money, I don't want to win. I don't, I don't need to win. Right, sure. I told you, yeah, of course I am, yeah. All right, nice one. So I bought it on YouTube. I think I give a, a false name. I think my name is Ben Meekle. I think bet my son's name. Oh, fucking just, just a twat. Just leaning on the road again. Yeah, just joke, just to a Joey absolute cunt in the van. But yeah, and it turned out, obviously, I'm nutty these fucking lads. They're like, mm, okay. <laughs> Could have got a bit beat on that one, but I hope shit happens. <laughs> uh, funny. And what was the story with Paul Venice as well? Oh, Paul, but he's another fucking lunatic. He has done for shoes and everything. Apparently, he's on the verge of being like a big time actor, uh, so it's in Newcastle. Like I said, no, 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 It's ironic because there's a kid who was drinking actually in college from Middlesbrough. And I said, like, Paul, and it's so I boxed him. He's kid, yeah, yeah, whatever. They said, yeah, I took a piss all through. No, 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 no. And there's two kids from Middlesbrough who know the kid as well. Um, I said, nah, nah, I just kidding me. So I told the story. I said, yeah, I did. I said, what I've done, I've been on a, I've been on a fucking uh, absolute bender. I've been on like a bender from 10 o'clock like morning to 10 o'clock like night. Absolutely steaming. These poor men is knocking every cunt out. And apparently, K1, I think he knocked 38 people out of 39 people. Like, oh, it's K1. I know, yeah, this kid, he's fucking everything. Even, even this referee, Big, big John. I mean, Jody, he's fucking back in. He goes a fucking riot. The, the ring, the people, uh, the crowd come near the ring, Middles, Middlesbrough um, Sports Centre or something else. I was mean, with I was with, uh, I was with Steve Martin and uh, Pete Smith, and we both like them, both have a ding dong. Here you them two and they go, Johnny, back it fucking in, we're getting killed! Fuck off, we're alright with Johnny bastards, I fucking hate Johnny's! Take a, from Middlesbrough, I'm calling them Johnny bastards. <laughs> like, it's all called all those comments. So he said, we're going to change your moves. Like, oh, the, even the bouncers come up, listen mate, you're talking about that. Fuck off, I fucking hate Johnny's. I don't fucking care. What about the fucking Johnny's, probably. Well done mate, shook your hand. These people are all looking, about like maybe 100 people are looking for you. Who the fucking hell is it? Hey, so I've got home, absolutely steaming. What can I make my for? What the fuck have I done? Honestly, I fucking got fucking murdered. This guy from EBF, he spent two hours. He rung Lee up. That ah, fucking idiot! He's doing a boxing license, he's not wearing a boxing one again! So I'm taking out bad for boxing license boxing. That's his fucking dude, Ollie. Hilarious, but yeah. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a big, big hit here to fucking some film, aren't But I'd be the big hit here to film, wouldn't I? Being straight there. Well, yeah. What Lee made. Well, yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah. I want to chat out. Uh, see Lee Mert, straight there. <laughs> Boy, well, yeah. yeah. So. Give me a shout out. Yeah. Um, and then, what was it with? Was you with the, uh, an Ingle gym? You staying with them out oh, of some money and there was a bit yeah, of a... Fuck it, see, it's fucking story time here, isn't it? Yeah, John Ingle, um, obviously, uh, obviously, I left those, uh, what I'd done, my little boy, Charlie, he's both things from a chore. And I was at, uh, obviously, with Sheffield, uh, Jefferson, Sheffield. And at the train station, I see Val Bangley, I love Val Smith, it's absolutely beautiful, it's amazing, not like, it's a beautiful one, she's great, inside out, great person. And, uh, you know, I feel the world of her. Uh, we're not as close as what used to be, but we used to be really close. Not like that, yeah, yeah. Well. yeah, she she wanted to pick one of the coaches that would give me time, boss. And uh, she said to me, she said, Oh, um, she said, oh why, why are you going to ours? Why are you going to ours? Really? Who else was there? It's a fucking Eagles gym. She's a coach, I'm at Hampshire's. So I went to, uh, went to Ingalls there, he said, living at Ingalls gym. And I was with her son, John Bagley, and obviously Lee, uh, Lou's passed away recently, but I said, Lee Noble. Uh, so, so in this house, hey, so I worked, I always worked, so I was going back from Sheffield to come to work, back to Sheffield. And so John Inglis money, so I had 40 quid a week it was, this house. So, so, no, no, I'll take it first wage, I'll take it first wage. And then I turned pro, and um, he just fucked that, fucked that out. In the rapper, so I like, fuck you, bollocks you. So I went to Carl Greaves. Uh, bear man, I always, I always said to him, do you want the money, do you want the money? No, I'll take it first, first purse. I never had a fucking first person, you soft cunt. So I went to Calgary and um, second fight, Wembley Arena. Like I say, I'm a scruffy kid from a council state. Yeah. Wembley Arena, of all places. I met up with, uh, <laughs> it's funny because obviously I was with uh, three rugby German at the time. Oh, the terror. There's me, I oh, oh, was Lee Nesbitt, because you're Matt C, right? I'm not sure what's the one. They were like, fuck it, you can't do it. So John Ingalls came in, all right, Jody, payday. So this is you fucking, you touch my way and punch your head. I swear that fuck ready to go out Wembley Arena. Wembley yeah. fucking Arena. You touch my way. And so me and John Ingalls are fr- mad at us. Let's smash our fucking face in. I mean, obviously, Ingalls and Bristol are another. Hey, Lee is it, it's, it's so diplomatic. Got it out. It's about to secure show. Come on, mate, I have to leave, mate. He says, no, he says, I'm a, he's never a mass mate, he can't keep me out. He can't keep me out. You get fucked off, you fucking idiot. And he said a few upset. I was like, like, you touch my mouth, smash your fucking head in. He touch the money. He didn't get his money either. <laughs> a little fucking shit out. You know. Then you've got a bit of ambition to get in the ring again with your, with your mum being South African. Um, got your, your <coughs> finger going over there, or? No, well, it's the thing is, um, I'm not too fat, fucking old, man. I can't ask to train. I remember when, when, I, when I was here from boxing, I remember, but I'm like, obviously when I banged up, I was off British license, went beam and that bullshit. And uh, then I went obviously white collar. And uh, I was getting back, I didn't get beat up by people that should have never even laced, 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 even fucking laced my boots, even as a journeyman. And so I, I remember walk, having a fight in um, London, I walked away crying. I got fucking bad by this kid. I won't be crying, and um, I thought that's it, that's game over, it's done, it's done now, it's done. Uh, but yeah, uh, and obviously Lee Burton was trying to get me uh, to get a fight in Africa, but obviously it never happened. I know Ruben Grunewald, um, he's an ex-boxer, so he's set pro in South Africa, even like colour, and uh, so it looks like I'm actually going over there to referee. I said to myself, I was like, oh, come listen, we can't afford you. We said, you can't afford to pay for it. I said, listen, mate, I don't care. So, obviously, do a dr- to fulfill a dream. I'll pay you on fight and everything. I don't give a fight for it. Excuse me, sorry. But yeah, so it looks like uh, I could go off to South Africa soon to referee. Uh, pretty, well, hopefully this year. So, yeah, yeah so, uh, yeah, so the dream is I will be back in the ring, but not in the boxing capacity. Yeah. Well, I think we've gone over everything. Near enough yeah, there. There's a lot more so I could have told you, but it's actually fucking well. So, well, thank you very much for no coming problem. on, Jody. Cheers. Thank you so much for watching. For more videos like this, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to find out who my future guests will be, please follow my Instagram and my Facebook pages.